Oz here coming to you from my kitchen and I recently watched a video where someone was talking about how evil spreadsheets are. She talked about the errors that are in them that they're so easy for anybody to use and that winds up being a problem because people make messed up formulas, they have a lot of bad habits. These conversations keep coming up and they're controlled by IT people and data scientists. And I feel like Excel users need to say something. We work with the number one business intelligence tool on the planet. But I don't think that we say enough about what we do, who we are, so that we can have a conversation around keeping this world's data clean and putting a smack down on crap data. Because there are consequences, there are bad things that happen when data screwed up. And rather than the back and forth, one thing I feel like is we've got to understand that we all have different roles. When we talk about, say, IT, IT looks different from company to company, from day to day. They have different relationships to the business. There are different roles. When I worked at an international enterprise, the IT department, they were the people that brought you a computer, made sure that your phone was connected and if people and what your extension is. That was IT in my world in an international company. Now, the people who handled reports, data, the people who you would go tell if you found out that somebody had multiple accounts in the system, those were database admins, those were business analysts. They didn't, they, they weren't in IT. So it surprised me to hear so much Attention about IT and Excel use but we do have different roles the business analysts and the database managers they constantly told me what their role was they dealt with the entire organization if I had a problem with 5,000 people that was too small for what they do you know, if I needed to find some small detail about 5,000 people because I found out the data was messed up somehow, I could count on a business analyst to give me a data dump. And then in Excel, I would figure out what was going on. She would remind me she's dealing with an entire company around the world. And if it's month end or month end is coming up or they're getting ready to launch a new portal for a major client well me and my 5,000 people had to wait but if I could handle the problem in Excel I was empowered I could do something and I pulled many asses out of many fires with Excel there was a partnership there was a respect for what each other had to do the business analyst would tell me if you do the analysis wrong that's on you Oz I am just giving you a raw data dump do you understand that I would say yes and take the data I you know in some instances I didn't have much choice there was wait until whenever she could deal with me and my 60 people my 5,000 people and if I had to wait the customers are dealing with the consequences of something that's not getting done. And in one situation, termination warning letters were going out to the wrong people. Now, that's, I don't want to be dealing with, should some data scientist be involved with that? Should some IT person be involved with that? No, that was me and the client. We worked that out ad hoc 
It was the kind of thing that would be done one time because somebody found an error. There was some calls coming in saying, wait a minute, I shouldn't be getting a termination warning letter. What's going on? So there was me and Excel dealing with that problem. And it took several weeks and we got it squared away. There was no news report about, you know, Oz and this famous goof in a spreadsheet. No. There were a lot of people who don't know that they were about to get termination warning letters, but we fixed the problem before it got too out of hand. And it happened in Excel and with a lot of communication and a lot of discussion about the data, the quality of the data. We had to change some processes, but we did it. And the lady who did the talk that I watched last night, she says she went into a business and asked, hey, I would like a list of all of your spreadsheets. And then she goes on to tell a story about how there was so many spreadsheets in the company. It was staggering. Well, was it really? How many abandoned spreadsheets were in there? We don't know. All we do is that we just have some big number. And why would she want a list of all the spreadsheets? See, this is where I'm concerned that our role is not completely understood. At one time, I had to develop a spreadsheet to track credit card disputes. Why would she want a spreadsheet that I use to track credit card disputes? Now, financials, that kind of stuff, um, whether to buy a company or not, I can understand, okay, then that's, that's a different level of analysis. But here's what happened. These faxes would come in and stack up and nothing would be done about them until my director started asking what are these who are they going to who's tracking this who's doing anything with these and so we looked at them and okay we realized they were credit card disputes somebody said they ordered $200 worth of merchandise that never showed up and they were disputing the credit card charge. So I was put on the task of figuring out how often these things come in. What does it take to win a dispute? What happens if we don't respond to a dispute? Can we track how many of these disputes we win or lose? Is there an appeal process? I was able to track all of that in Excel in my cubicle and report to my director about how this was going. This was data that had fallen through the cracks. This isn't about P&Ls or payroll or who's taking up all of their paid leave. It's not that. This is something that had fallen through the cracks. These faxes were just showing up and going to nobody in particular. So there I was with Excel over several months understanding that whole process. Whether you get to appeal or not. You know, I set up alerts in my spreadsheet so that every Monday I could open it up and see if there was yellow, those meant those were expiring within the next week. If there was red, that was going to expire within a few days. And those colors meant I had not responded to them yet. Because let's say that there was something that was expiring tomorrow, but I had already responded to it. That would not turn red. I would not want to involve IT or some data cop in that process. 
I know what I needed to do. I had the spreadsheet set up. It was handled. And once I understood the process, it was easy to turn it over to somebody with details, with the history. Everything was there. Another thing about business users, IT, database admins, business analysts. When you find out that a report is obsolete, it can take a lot to get that thing revised. And you have to decide what kind of resources are going to be put into fixing, uh, revising, overhauling a report. It's not easy. And in a lot of instances, it was much easier for me to handle things in Excel with raw data. In this one instance, it was, if it was some really, really sophisticated report, there was an off-site consultant who dealt with that. That wasn't the business analyst. That wasn't anybody in the office. So see, there's a lot, a lot that Excel users do. And we need to be empowered and we need to be in the conversation and not so much seen as the other, the casual user who's writing bad formulas and messing up the company's data. No, 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 no. We are on a team trying to get into the same end zone. And we have different roles. IT, whatever you call IT, I think of it more like the off-site consultant and the business analyst, not the people who make sure you have a computer and passwords. But they can't move as fast as somebody with Excel. And we need to talk more about the partnership. Because there's a reason why Excel remains with us and is used by so many people. And you know, one other thing I'll say about Excel. Excel winds up being a bridge between a lot of different softwares. Excel gets people off of their islands. You know, I've seen where a store subscribes to reporting. And they get these daily reports, weekly reports, quarterly reports. Okay, but that data needs to be sent to the state or needs to be sent to headquarters. A lot of times it's got to pass through Excel because it's going to come out of the third party vendor in one format, but then the person who really needs the data, they need it a different way. How are they going to do that? It's going to pass through Excel. I was on a project recently where there were 400 databases around the country and the only thing that they all talked was Excel. So I built a bridge between 400 databases. Well, the alternative would be, okay, go and um, homogenize that whole thing, put all these 400 separate entities on their own, uh, on the same database, oh, good luck with that. So let's not discount Excel. You know, we're on the same team trying to whoop crap data, trying to make people's lives easier so that they aren't unnecessarily suffering because of messy data. That's what I've got to say on this fine Monday morning. And I'll close. Please be sure to keep your data clean. Wherever you store your data, what tool you use, just keep it clean.